When did you come to the U.S.? March 17, 2016. Did you eat anything on your journey from the camp to the U.S.? No, just cookie. Just yeah. one cookie? Yes. By the time you got here, you were probably so hungry. Yes. Tired, very, very hungry. Refugees traveling to the U.S. sometimes travel for weeks, often with children in tow and without many belongings. When they land, some refugees are exhausted, some starving. But their first meal in the U.S., that's one last thing for them to worry about. Refugees go through a very rigorous vetting process overseas. But then when they arrive, they are met by my staff. They are bundled up in winter coats if it's cold. And they have there, waiting for them in the kitchen, a culturally appropriate hot meal. When they reminisce on that first evening when they arrived, almost all of them will mention how surprised they were to have a meal that they're familiar with. Now, sure, maybe some of the kids were hoping for hamburgers and french fries, but in general, people are really touched by that culturally appropriate meal. The meal is mandated by the State Department, which says all resettlement agencies that sponsor arriving refugees must serve a culturally appropriate meal. That's where sponsors like Iris come in. They make sure the food is tied to the refugee's homeland. Iris is an immigrant and refugee resettlement agency in Connecticut. They help refugees from war-torn countries like the Democratic Republic of Congo, Afghanistan, and Syria. The group finds housing, provides English lessons, makes sure children are enrolled in school, and helps with job placement. Sometimes, the people cooking the meal have been resettled themselves, like Nima Lumoni. She's one of the many Iris volunteers who cook a family's first meal. I met Nima at her home to find out about her resettlement story and to help her prepare for the arrival of a family of nine from the Democratic Republic of Congo. I was from Congo and then I traveled Tanzania refugee camp. It's hard for you to think about that time? I have my parents who have died. And then I live with my uncle. How did you feel when your uncle said that you were leaving Congo? Uh, it has taken a long time to be okay. The Democratic Republic of Congo, also known as the DRC, went through one of its darkest periods in the 1990s. The Rwanda genocide forced millions of Rwandans into neighboring countries, including the DRC. This led to the first Congo War and then the second, lasting until 2003. It came to be known as Africa's Great War, with more than six countries and dozens of armed groups fighting within DRC's borders. More than 1.2 million people were displaced, including Nima. She fled the DRC around 1998 and ended up in a refugee camp in Tanzania. In 2016, Nima came to the U.S. with her three children, reuniting with her husband, who had already resettled in the States. Spent a long time in Tanzania. Yeah, it's too long. Mm, 19 years. How was the cooking that was prepared for you for that first meal? Oh, it was good because it was the same food that I ate and offered. Were you surprised? Yes. Were you happy? Too much. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you want to cook for the new family? Now we never see anything too bad. Mm. Yeah, I'm happy to do that for people from everywhere. Refugees are eager to give back because they will never forget those first few days when people step forward to help them. They know how important that is. They know how it made them feel. So they say, I want to help the new arrivals, the new refugees who are coming next week or next month. Please, let me do what I can. Now Nima's preparing food for a family of nine, originally from the DRC as well. They're coming from a refugee camp in Uganda. Oh, my aunt told me how to cook. Meat, rice, beans. Today is good. Today is good? Yeah, because you learn. 
She's teaching me. Yes. The U.S. has long accepted refugees fleeing persecution or war. Since 1980, with the passage of the Refugee Act, the U.S. government has been systematically vetting, admitting, and resettling refugees into American life. The U.S. resettled about 85,000 refugees in 2016. The following year, in 2017, that number dropped to 54,000. The decrease is part of President Donald Trump's efforts to reduce the number of people entering the country, both illegally and legally. And for 2019, his administration capped refugees at 30,000. That's the lowest amount since the Refugee Act was passed. We should be resettling more refugees than all of the other countries with refugee programs put together. And that's the way it was for most of the past 30 years. But the amazing thing that has kept our morale high and kept us strong is grassroots support for refugee resettlement. So every time something crazy and ugly is spewed from the White House, hundreds of people will respond and say, we don't accept that. We want to show our support for your work. IRIS has about 500 volunteers supporting its numerous programs in New Haven, which includes those cooking arrival meals for refugee families. Back at Nima's home, the Congolese food she's prepared is finally ready to be delivered. She's finished making a traditional meal of meat, rice, and fufu, which is a starchy dough popular throughout West and Central Africa. Nima joined Iris's staff in delivering the meal to the refugee family's new home. But the family hadn't arrived yet, so Nima was not able to meet them. So tell me how the first meal, when refugees touch down in the U.S., how that plays into their resettlement process. They have very vivid memories of what the weather was like, what the apartment looked like, how they felt when they walked into that apartment. I mean, these are people who've been on the move for many years. They've been pushed around. They've been persecuted. Family members have been pulled away from them. Finally, when they get here, they want to begin to have some control over things. When the family finally arrived at their new home, their case managers gave them a quick tour and rundown of the place. This controls the heat in your apartment? Yes. You started your application four years ago? Like 10 years. Because I have 14 years. Wow. Yes. And the father of the arriving family, Mihego Mutoka, told me they traveled for two days and said the food on the airplane wasn't easy to eat, especially since the kids weren't used to the type of food provided. But the food that Nima cooked reminded him of food from home. He said he was feeling much better and that now he could focus on getting the kids in school and finding a job welcoming persecuted people from all over the world, helping them start new lives. I mean, it doesn't get better than this. It is our oldest, most noble tradition, a tradition of welcoming refugees mm -hmm. that has helped make this country so strong and successful. Mm -hmm. This is probably the best foreign policy program 